I want to spend a few moments to discuss the different phases of database replication. Apparently, there are so many semantics attached to replication. When we say replication, we really should uh, peel the onion behind it and, and, and try to clarify what do we mean by replication. There are so many things, and I'll attempt to answer them in this video. So if you like this stuff, stay tuned. Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host Hussein Nasser. And today I want to discuss replication. Replication. Database replication to be specific. And there's there's so much stuff when we talk about replication. I don't know if we call them methods or or uh mediums of medication replication it's just there is so much stuff there is the idea of synchronous replication the idea of asynchronous replication the idea of one-way replication the idea of two-way replication the idea of menage à replication every single thing right confuses us there is other stuff as well there is the idea of streaming replication there is the idea of logical replication there is the idea of statement based replication what does all that mean and can we actually categorize that the short answer is no you can't categorize any of that because all of this stuff is made up not not all of it but just understand it you don't have to categorize why are we human beings like that why do we need to feel the urge to categorize everything right it's either this or this no you can have gray you can have something in the middle it's okay right we should not really spend a lot of time try to bleh, organize stuff but let's let's piece things together what is replication first the idea of having database replication is you have a beautiful database. It has to be it has to be beautiful. If it's not beautiful, I send it, I send it back. So and you're writing to this database. And you're reading from this database. But eventually at a certain stage, the database is gonna get overworked. The CPU and RAM associated resources associated with this machine hosting that instance will get overwhelmed, right? And you can argue why is it getting overwhelmed? You might be executing dumb queries that scanning the 300 terabyte of data and then say, and then you pick one row out of it and you say, oh, I'm going to add more RAM. No, your queries are dumb, son. Just fix your query. Sometimes not adding more resources throwing more money at the problem doesn't really solve it right think oh i'm gonna get a beefier machine because my queries are slow no your queries are just bad fix your queries right before sometimes we optimize their own things it's just nuts all right so that's the, but eventually if you're writing efficient queries, eventually there's just so much users there's so much queries getting executed thrown away so you start to implement this thing that's called a query command segregation, C CQRS, right? Responsibility segregation, CQRS. Very fancy word. And the idea is just separate reads from writes. Let the writes be alone. Leave the writes alone, okay? And then have the reads be somewhere else. Have another database that handles the reads. And there's where replications come in handy have another database and the moment you start writing to your primary database have a method of syncing s-y-n-k not s-i-n-k syncing the changes to your replica to that other secondary database and let those poor slobs read from the secondary database okay so if you do that, then you can still serve reads off of your primary database and then serve reads off of your secondary database. We call this a replica. And this process is called replication. So that's at its infancy. But now, you might say, Hussein, I have so many questions. 
how do you really sync stuff? What are we syncing exactly? What are we sending to the other party, to the other database? And there, are, and here is where you can apply different methods to achieve different outcomes. I don't know what that means. I just said it. The idea here is, let's take one thing. Let's take the content of the replication. What are we syncing to the other stuff? Where, what, what are we sending? We're sending two, two things, really. You can, you can either send the naive implementation that I would have built is to send the SQL statement string down to the replica's throat and just this just just hammer those sequels you receive a string just send it to the other path right obviously when we when i look at how my sequel does thing which is very similar statement based replication that's what they call statement based replication so every statement just send it to them so there is the bandwidth in the networking between the primary and the replica is very minimum because we're sending a stinking string or many strings, right? I don't know what's wrong with this, to be honest, but when I actually looked at how people implement that, they implemented the reverse way. They, they parse what they call the wall, they will write ahead log to find out the statement. I don't know why we're doing this. I don't know why we're not sending just string. There might be a good reason those smart people building databases they don't do this for a good reason hey guys hussein from editing as i was editing this video and i say i ask this question why we're sending the actual statement string all the way to the database right there is one disadvantage of that because you just spent precious time executing that statement you have planned it you have analyzed it you prepared a statement you prepare the variable the bind variables you purged verged is not a verge what's the other word you surged not surged you created a path there is a urge in it there is a word with urge in it you forged thank you you forged a path to select those queries to select these rows and now the replica is doing the same thing this is an insult to the database if you're re-executing the same query you just did the work that's expensive re-executing that expense at the replica is just is just a bad idea you want to avoid that that's why we're we're going to talk about it in a minute logical replication binary replication is the fastest because you don't really execute anything here's my output but here, here's the actual output of things the problem with that is obviously the bandwidth. There is more stuff to send across the network. Back to the video. So the other approach is, instead of sending the statement to the other party, you send instead the content, the output of your statement to the other party. And that's called binary replication. And Postgres is called streaming replication because as things happen, happen in your primary let's say you're doing an update statement a single string a single update statement that resulted in a million rows so that content the binary output of writing a hundred a million row to your database is being synced is being pushed to your database to the other database so as the volume of edit now multiplies right plus another kind of the good thing about this is as things happen you can immediately see it in the read replica right it's like as you start streaming things you can immediately see it as you're committed right and plus the commit now when you commit on your primary database you don't have to uh wait and then to transfer all the changes no you merely send the command issue to your read i say hey by the way commit all the changes these are good you don't really need to wait for everything to comes in and then so i push it right so that's that's part of binary replication plus streaming it's, it's a different thing binary replication can be streaming streamed as things happen, go push it, push it, push it. You might say, what if I rolled back? Well, tough luck. 
you gotta send a rollback to the other machine so the other machine has to now roll back all the junk that it did right so there is like always really pros and cons for everything streaming logical replication in postgres on the other hand doesn't really deal with binary stuff doesn't stream the actual wall content that that changed on disk to this to the direction to the to the direct database to that replica database because here's a problem the binary representation of things changes between a release to another so technically you cannot stream replicate a postgres 10.0 to a postgres 14 because they are different binary if you shove that information that binary file to that replica the the replica is gonna freak out it's like what the heck is this what did you send me i don't know any of it this is different so postgres now started to doing the logical replication which is like a higher level abstraction almost statement based but not really it tells you that hey in the world hey someone changed this value to this someone changed this to this it just does say this it doesn't actually say oh x is now seven it says someone changed x to seven does that make sense that's the logical representation and then these logical changes are pushed so it's essentially higher uh, lower bandwidth and you can replicate from a postgres 10 to 19 19 is not it's not shipped yet okay you get the idea hey guys this is hussein after taking a nap um and and continuing the editing um postgres 14 has just shipped a feature to achieve streaming replication with logical replication so do not link streaming replication just to binary you can stream logical changes too right it's just another method right back to the editing now hussein i'm reading i'm reading from your your stinking replica and i'm not seeing the change that i just wrote and that's what youtube ran into by the way the first 2006 ish 2007 ish when you change your profile and you refresh i think twitter ran into the same thing as well you you made a change and you like i don't know, you change your birth date of birth right and then you apply and then you refresh you don't see the change so people started freaking out oh what happened i thought i changed it the reason what was going on is because we are in the web and it's stateless you make a write to the primary right you don't change the replica that's what one direction isn't that a band one direction is right it's like you change only one place and you push to the reads so now if you change the primary and then you turn around and read from the replica guess what the change is not there it takes time obviously it takes a finite amount of time for the replica to actually commit for the replica to receive that stuff it, de it really depends whether you're using streaming versus non-streaming replication there's a delay and that delay what uh, marketing people started coining it as if it's a good thing they call it eventual consistency we're so good well yeah we have consistency hey yeah we have consistency it's just eventual consistency that's why no sql databases by default they market their stuff as eventual consistent well relational has the same thing that same problem the moment you split stuff into multiple databases you have eventual consistency so people were not happy about that because okay we don't really like marketing people and we don't really like the term that's called eventual consistency it's made up right like like everything in in this world it's made up we like we don't like made up stuff so meet synchronous replication so what, what does that mean and that cassandra did this the best i believe with, with a configurable quorum but the idea is when you write to your primary know that as a writer you're executing this delete statement or update statement know that you're not alone you're not talking to a single machine i as a database when i implement synchronous replication that means i am gonna block your commit when you say commit i'm gonna let you wait yeah i'm gonna write eventually to my disk but i'm not gonna return 
immediately for you, right? Because that's what we do. Because how do we guarantee acid? Hey, atomicity, consistency, durab uh, uh, isolation, uh, atomicity, uh, and durability. If I guarantee those four in a single machine, I am acid, right? But not really, because you're in a multi-node environment. There is another RAID replica that needs my change. So what you do is you, the writer issue a commit and it's block. And she is blocked, she's waiting. And now you as a primary database sends a request to say, hey, by the way, hey, replica, yo, commit. And then you might have other replicas. Hey, commit, 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 commit. And then you only commit and return and unblock the user if all of those suckers reply, says, share. Because all, they, all of them are in Boston. So I say share to the tap, right? All good stuff. So they reply back with a comment, commit. And then they, now you say, okay, I'm going to commit to my disk. And then I'm going to reply back to you, say, you're going to stay, you're, you're, your change is being done. So now the profile will say, okay, saved. Even if you refresh, if you hit a replica, you're going to see that change, buddy. You're going to see it. That's called synchronous replication. Beautiful design. The other approach is obviously the asynchronous replication, which is faster commits, but eventually consistent. Did we talk about everything? I think we did. I think we covered everything, except the direction of the stuff. So one direction is, is my preferred approach, because you write to one place and then you push changes to read replicas. Those guys don't, you don't, you don't allow writes to these guys. You allow write to one place. The problem is like, what if you want to scale your write? Then you start talking about sharding and, and sh sharding <laughs> and, and partitioning and all that stuff. It just becomes complicated. I don't like complexity. I like simplicity. But if you would like to complicate your life, because I know you, you like to complicate your life, then there's this th other thing that's called bidirectional replication, where you can issue writes to other read replicas. But now what happens... Yeah, the problem of conflict resolution. Nobody likes to resolve conflicts. Nobody loves conflict resolution. It's the worst, right? So if you like these kind of kinky things, then if you're into these kind of kinky things, then yeah, maybe you try bidirectional replication. But it's not my cup of tea. I like my simplicity stuff, right? I didn't really see a good implementation of a bidirectional replication uh, it always falls apart at one point. I mean, if you have simple rules like, okay, master wins or the replica always wins, then yeah, maybe. But what if what if two two people at the same time write to the same value? What do we do, right? Who wins? Like, how do you achieve isolation at that level? Then you uh, then you have to start doing all these kind of uh, what do we call it? Uh, that Kafka thing. I forgot what it's called. I don't know, the microservices across different nodes that allows uh, things to, you know, I, I forgot what it's called. Yeah, committing across different nodes. Uh, yeah, yeah, it scares my mind. So how do you achieve essentially phases, uh, two-phase commits in a, in a microservices architecture? There is a name for it. There's an acronym, fancy acronym for it. But uh, guys, that's what I want to talk about in this episode of the Backend Engineering Show, Replication. Very fancy, but there's so much into the weeds for it. And I barely scratch the surface. All right, guys. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, yo. Descartes.